The other thing I just want to tell you is sometimes the environment itself doesn't have to change. What changes our perception of the environment. And I'm going to take a minute to tell you about one of the best examples I can think of this is a very simple exercise called the gratitude exercise. Have you heard of this? Has anybody tried it? Okay. There's studies now that show that you can measurably improve health outcomes as well as happiness and life satisfaction. If you do a simple exercise at the end of the day, you sit down and write down three to five things that happened during that 24 hours that you're grateful for. Okay? Now, I tried the exercise and I, you know, was pleasantly surprised that while I'm writing and thinking about the things I'm grateful for, of course I'm going to feel in a good mood. What I had not anticipated is what it does through the rest of the 24 hours. You see, tonight I'm going to face a blank sheet of paper and I have to come up with three to five things that happened during this day that I'm grateful for. I'm getting a little nervous. We're already at 11 o'clock. Have I found anything yet? Okay. So suddenly my antenna go up. I begin to filter my environment, my experience, and uh, the people around me to discover and identify the things I'm grateful for. And so the environment hasn't changed. These things have been going on every day all the time. What's changed is my cognitive frame and the way I perceive the environment. And so a very important way to approach environmental change is actually by changing people's conception of the environment. I have a friend, Nancy Bruning, who's written a book, 50 Things You Can Do on a Park Bench. I love that title. Isn't that a great title? 50 things. And suddenly, I can't walk by a park bench without thinking and looking at that park bench in a different way. These changes in cognitive frame are extremely powerful. I went to buy a car. This was some years ago. And the guy said, well, what else are you looking at? And I told him I was looking at this Chevrolet or something. And he suddenly stopped and he looked at me. He says, you know, the problem with that is nobody under the age of 50 should buy that car. Now, I knew what he was doing. He was manipulating me towards selling his car. But I've got to tell you, we're 30 years later. I cannot get that thought out of my mind. I now look at the Chevrolet and I'm going, even, you know, I'm over 50, I could buy it now. But I'm looking at that car and I'm thinking, I can't buy that car. It, this framing and allowing people to see the world differently is an underutilized, and I'm going to come back to that, in terms of supporting behavior change. 